Hello and welcome back to the Villa Villa podcast. It's a late, late edition of the Villa Villa podcast. We're sat here at just for midnight on Saturday night. We're late to the news and I'd just like to apologise. It's only a solo one, unfortunately. Both Dan and I out enjoying some weekend festivities that meant we couldn't be with you guys to break down this transfer when it happened. But this is the best I've got for you guys, unfortunately. Just got back from a very busy night. Just wanted to hop on quickly. We'll be doing a deeper dive uh, probably into next week, really, once Dan and I get a bit of a bigger picture around this transfer. We're going to be looking at the deal in a bit more detail, what we can expect from Tielemans, and probably most importantly, what it means for this Villa midfield. But yes, there it is in a nutshell. Yuri Tielemans has signed up for Aston Villa as a free agent. He'll make the short trip across the Midlands when his contract expires at Leicester City on the 1st of July 2023. The medical, it looks is like all that's left to be done as part of this deal. There's obviously no fee being agreed as he's a Bosman signing, but there are a lot of reports that point to a very lucrative contract that's lured him to Villa Park at the expense of some pretty big clubs around Europe. And from what we can see online, it looks like Roma established some contacts with the player. It looks like Galatasaray established some contract with the players. A lot of big clubs on the continent and a couple in England potentially were sort like were searching for Tielemans, looking to get him on board because he's still a very good age. You know, when I when I did the transfer rumor mill on the player, when when the links were sort of established through the athletic. It was one where I sort of had that realisation that he was still only 26 and it feels like because he started playing football when he was so young at Anderlecht, it feels like he should be a little bit older than that. And that's why, you know, we've seen some people say online, a lot of, you know, Les fans saying that he's not perhaps got the legs that he once did or anything like that. But I think it's one where this isn't... I'm really excited to see what the Villa midfield looks like on the opening day of the season because I think that will be a real litmus test of exactly what this signing is for, what we've planned to really use him as within this squad because Villa have a really tough balancing act to do this summer whereby you have an 11 which needs upgrading in some positions, definitely. I wouldn't say necessarily since midfield is one of those, but that's where you have depth is a real issue in certain midfield. And Yuri Tielemans, when you're warning off the likes of Roma and Galatasaray and all these amazing clubs on the continent that also can guarantee European football, some at a higher level than Aston Villa's Europa Conference League. Obviously, money plays a big part of this. And this is why, you know, you sort of do have to temper things when you talk about free signings is because, yes, you haven't paid a free fee, but because that opens the door to a wider variety of clubs that can't stump up the capital and pay a big fee for a player like Tielemans if he was on a two or three year deal would be costing, you know, several tens of millions. It's one where you often have to pay more in wages, in signing on bonuses, in agent fees and all sorts of stuff to convince the player that your project is the right one. But Villa have managed to do that exactly as we did for Bubu Kamara this season before. Uh, let's just have a little run through of Tielemans' career today because obviously he's been in the Premier League for a good four years now. Um, five if you include the sort of six month four and a half if you include the six month loan that he had to Leicester before his move was made permanent back in 2019 uh, started out as I said uh, almost 10 seasons ago um, in the Belgian Pro League with Anderlecht uh, an incredible age at which to make his debut came through really young there um, signed his first professional contract with the club at the age of 16 uh, he was included um, pretty much straight away 21st of July in the senior squad for the first time the 28th, just a week later, made his debut, uh, the fourth youngest player in Belgian Pro League history. And he wasn't a bit player part, bit part player either. Made 35 appearances in all competitions that season, scoring two goals. The next year, as a 17 come 18 year old, 52 appearances, eight goals. And by the way, he's played European football in all of his seasons in Belgium, making four, eight, nine, and 15 appearances respectively. So you can see just in the number of appearances he's making in European football, how his importance to Anderlecht really started to grow as he really started to make a name for himself and became 
one of the most sought after midfield talents in Europe at that time in terms of these up and coming under 21 players. Um, made a lot of appearances for Anderlecht, 185 in just four seasons as, as such a young player, scoring 35 goals in all competitions, makes the switch to Monaco in Ligue 1. And that's where he didn't stay there for very long. It was only really a season and a half. Uh, made 27 appearances for Monaco in his first season um, in the league, 35 in all competitions. Uh, started to make a name for himself in terms of the Belgian squad as well. So although he started playing for the Belgian national team towards the end of his time in Anderlecht, it was when he was at Monaco that it really kicked into gear. 2018 made 11 caps for the Red Devils, nine in 2019 before that move to Leicester, which is where he's become a household name, not just in England, but I think across Europe really is, you know, his move to Leicester has coincided with a particularly successful period out for the club. Missed out on that incredible title winning season, obviously, but was there for the FA Cup win, was there for the Community Shield win. Obviously, he is responsible almost solely for that FA Cup win because he scored one of the great FA Cup final goals, smashing in a pretty incredible top corner rocket from about 30 yards to see the Foxes past Chelsea in that game. Um, and he's been almost ever present for Leicester, really, since he signed, uh, since the deal was made permanent. 37, 38, 32 and 31 appearances in the Premier League leading up into last season where that obviously they were relegated. Um, seven appearances in Europe in 2020-21, 13 appearances in 21-22 as Leicester made it to the semi-finals of the Europa Conference League. So there's a whole lot of, of pretty incredible um numbers there he's played a lot of football um there is a I, the only slight worry that i have with this deal is that i can see a lot of injuries um coming down the line for euro team just because he's been playing football for so long since such a long age but that's where the fee has tempered that you know if this was a 50 60 million pound deal i think i'd feel quite differently about this but i mean look at that track record look at the clubs that he's played for look at the competitions that how long he's been playing in european football for this is a really, really interesting signing. And not a signing that I thought Villa would be making, to be honest with you. But this is where like Unai clearly has a plan. And I'd love to know what that plan is that we've, he's relayed to Yuri Tielemans. That's going to be the really interesting part. And that's what I'm sure Dan and I will be back to talk about in a little bit more detail. So I won't go into that too much. I'm aware that it's late. Anybody's watching this as it's come out on the Saturday night or the Sunday morning. Um, more power to you. You are the real MVPs. Uh, but for most of you that are waking up on Sunday to this in your inbox, um, I hope it. I hope it. You know, puts a smile on your face. This is a massive deal from the Villa. A real statement of intent. We've beat off some massive clubs to land this. You know, if, if those links are, are true, and you know there was the likes of Roma involved and all of these other clubs around the continent, I imagine he's obviously turned down a deal to stay at Leicester as well to make this possible. Um, this is pretty incredible. This is pretty incredible. It's a really, really interesting signing. But exactly what will it mean for this midfield? What does it mean for the likes of Douglas Louise, Jacob Ramsey, John McGeehan, Boob Kamara, all of those guys that are already so established? Um, that will be set to be discussed in part two between me and Dan Morgan. We'll be back at full compliment very soon, Villa fans. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. What a signing we've made here, guys. Up the Villa. <laughs>